Shevsky here, and welcome to Fantasy House. Every week I have a different friend uh, come on and give us a tour of their imaginary cartoon-like Rick and Morty Adventure Time style uh, adventure house. They just get wild with their imaginations. Adults. Adults getting wild with their imaginations. Just a free-for-all. No worrying about hiring a contractor or getting a mortgage. Just going and just coming up with the weirdest, trippiest house. The technology isn't, inve- isn't invented yet? Well, just make it up. So much fun, dude. Uh, uh, the, the show is brought to you, uh, every episode is brought to you by me, John Shevsky, uh, the, uh, the, the really real real estate agent in, in Southern California. There's, uh, there's a lot of real estate agents, apparently, my friend told me. I thought I was the only one for a couple, for a while. I was like, I'm the only real estate agent. Trust me. I, I guarantee it. And then uh, I Googled, and a couple people encouraged me. They sent me a few links, and they were like, no, there's, there's two or three other real estate agents. And I was like, all right, how can I separate myself? Well, I'm really real. And they're like, so are you a really real real estate agent? I was like, yeah, yeah, you could say that. Uh, so if you want to talk about houses, you want to talk about buying houses, selling houses, multifamily uh, rental properties, anything fun that has to do with real estate, uh, I'm, your, I'm your dog, dog. Uh, hit me up. Uh, you can send me an email at fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com or you can go to my Instagram, which is there's a Fantasy House Podcast Instagram or there's a John Shevsky Instagram, J-O-N-S-H-E-F-S-K-Y. Why? Why not? That's what I always say. Uh, this episode's uh, great. I'm so stoked about it. The guest is a good friend of mine. We've, we've known each other for years and years and years. He's a dentist. He's a comedian. Rad dude. And his house, his fantasy house, is so good. I'm so excited for you guys to hear it because it, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's one we haven't had yet. So I, I love it when people come up with stuff. And I'm like, oh, no one's had this one. It's just like it's really fresh. So Drew Francis, great dude. L- let's do this episode now. In the words of the great Angelo Bowers, let us do this. Oh, what you think of all the of the people who have your fantasy house? You're the host with the most experience in your fantasy house. Get all the money for expensive construction. Be your baby with your imagination. You're the host with your fantasy house. And now, I am Drew Francis. And uh, during the day, I am a dentist and... Superhero at night? No, I wish. <laughs> uh, at night, a comedian. Mostly sketch comedy right now. How are you liking comedy? Um, it, it like ebbs and flows. Uh, yeah. When I have like my bad days in dentistry, I'm, I'm like, oh man, like, I, I can't wait to do that comedy stuff. And then... When I bomb, I'm like, well, <laughs> I gotta go back to being a dentist. Yeah, yeah. I'm killing it on that stage. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it, it's a yin and a yang kind of deal, you know. How do you how do you bomb when you do sketch comedy? Um, like as a group, though, so you guys yeah. you can blame it on your partners. You can well, be like, it's your fault. Yeah. Well, this <laughs> you was, did yes and you dipshit. <laughs> this was more when I was doing a, a primarily stand up. Yeah, um, and like you know, just sometimes you just have those brutal nights where you're just like. All right. Um, yeah, let's. What did I think I was gonna do? <laughs> yeah, you're like I totally thought that bit was gonna work. And <laughs> What's the worst night you've had doing stand up? Um, I don't even think it, it wasn't even a night I went up. Um, it was while you were pulling someone's it, tooth. No, no, like, you know it was crazy. I was at the mall the other day and uh, no, nothing on that. Okay, no, it was like it, it was probably like I feel like the worst I ever bombed was um, I was doing this set at Flappers. Yeah, and for some reason, I was on this like real St- Steve Harvey tip where it was just like you got to believe in yourself. So I just well, you do though. Steve's <laughs> Steve's wrong about a bunch of stuff, but that's yeah. one thing he's definitely right about. Right? You should believe in yourself. Yeah, and I don't even. I I, I thought they were maybe jokes, but I, I basically spent my last like two minutes of my set just being like, "Yo, you just got to believe in yourself in life." Telling that to the crowd. Oh, you were saying that for real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like doing it in what I thought was joke form. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, like, at the end, the club owner was like, what the hell was that? And I was like, is it Steve Hart? No? no? Never mind. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you for having Sorry me. Sorry for being inspirational, not being so negative. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so okay, so what was the, what's the worst day, uh, worst time you've bombed as a dentist? <laughs> as a dentist? Oh, Are you allowed man. to legally tell us, or will you, will you be uh, in trouble? Will oh. someone, with, someone with a fucked up grill be like, he's talking about me. Thankfully, I haven't like royally screwed up in dentistry. Thankfully, hell yeah. Yeah. That seems like so scary for like for someone like myself. I'm like in the mouth, just yeah. messing with people's mouths. Yeah. That seems super scary. Like if you bomb on stage as a comic, it's like, all right, well, yeah. 
gonna not gonna not gonna get any special coming on to you. Not gonna be on Comedy Central next month. Yeah. But like, if you like have a bad time with someone's mouth, it's like that's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. I I mean, I've definitely, you know, like I think there are, there are patients which um, can have a negative effect on your day where you're like you know like the procedure didn't go as planned or whatnot maybe they're in a chair for a very long time um you ever have like gnarly breath where you're just like damn why did i get into this i need to get on stage i can't be smelling these people's these people's guts anymore i mean for the most part like i can maybe remember like two patients where it's just like oh wow like <laughs> this mask is not helping at all Dude. but for the most part i mean like i know what i signed up for and yeah it yeah. doesn't really bother me that yeah, much you're a pro you're a gentleman <laughs> listen you being all nice right now you don't want to scare anyone he's a good dentist folks and he will not talk shit on your mouth <laughs> No, I, I mean, and I think part of that is like I, I, I generally try to be as like self reflective as possible. So as, as far as like thinking about like the worst days I've ever bombed in like dentistry, I, I think mostly it, it would. My first impression would be like just just being in like the private practice side of it. I, I don't do private practice anymore. I, I work in uh, community health and. When I was working in private practice, that that would make me feel like just – it was like very like soul-sucking. Why? What is it? Tell me. Because me and I'm sure a ton of my listeners are not dentists. So we're like, no. what, what is it? What is it like? Well, well, a lot of it is just like the business side of it. And, and, and I think I went into dentistry like very naive. It was like, oh, you know, like – uh, what are you going to be when you grow up? It's like, oh, I'm going to do something in healthcare. And it was like, de- when it turned out it was dentistry, it was like, yeah, I'm going to help people and I'm going to make like a decent amount of money. I was going to say, it seems like a really cool career choice. Like exactly yeah. what you just said. Like I'm going to do a good service for my community and get res- responsibly paid or whatever you call it, reasonably yeah. paid. Sounds great. And I, one, the, the amount of student debt it, it took to get there, it was like, oh my God. Um, that so, like... Ain't that America? Yeah. <laughs> They're making a documentary about it right now. Don't worry, Drew. <laughs> I'm sure. Dentistry debt. Debt? Oh yeah! Dude. Oh my God! It's right. It's ridiculous. It's called like debt cavity or something oh. like that. <laughs> the truth about the dental. Oh, yeah. oh, I wonder if I can narrate that. No. What is it? What, so like, it costs a bunch to become a dentist. Costs a bunch then to you be, become a dentist. Because like, you're a creative dude. You're an artist. You're a comedian. Uh-huh. Like, how, is there room to be creative in dentistry? Or I. Well, yeah, I would say that. I mean, uh, as far as like where the work comes in, yeah, because like I'm gonna drill it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, the it, it definitely wax takes on, some type, type of artistry. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as as far as like, uh, I think the, I think the people who do it successfully like are, are very creative in, in the ways they they market themselves, um, in the ways that they uh, set up their practices. Yeah. Um, so I I do think there's a uh, there's a way to be creative in that aspect. But I guess to play the other side, um, dentists are very reserved people. I've uh, noticed. <laughs> so I see them at the bicycle store every now and then. I'm like, Y'all are very reserved. Yeah. So uh, like it it's, feels weird. So when I wear these like different hats, like when I'm in, in the dental word, yeah. world, like I I try not to let too much of the comedy bleed into it. One, because – I don't. I, w- I don't want people to think that I don't take my dental totally. profession seriously, uh, because I do. Um, uh, I, I want to be good. I want to be competent. I want totally. people to have faith in me, um, and know that I'm not just joking around. And then you know, when I'm in my comedy wor- uh, world, um, it is very. It, it, it is. It is funny, like the, the difference in personalities and and whatnot. Um. So, you, and then I guess as far as like this. The soul sucking part was just, or I guess, the, what I came to dentistry naive about um, what was just how much business goes into it, like how much selling. Oh yeah, yeah, and and it's crazy, huh? Yeah, it's it's crazy everywhere. I've noticed it. I mean, cause I've done a million jobs, right? Before I landed in, I so like I was. Don't feel alone, by the way. Uh, if you're like, I was naive, like yeah. you're not dumb. We're all naive. <laughs> like the whole structure of the way our world works, yeah. it just puts us in spots where like you're supposed to choose at a very young age, like what you want to be for the rest of your life. You have no idea what it is because school isn't the real thing. School doesn't necessarily pair up with like reality, and, and they don't seem to always take advice from the pros. And the pros are like, "Here's what you should be doing in school." They're always like, "Oh no, no, Einstein, don't tell us how to do our schools." Like 50 years later, you're like, yeah. "Maybe you should listen to Mr. Rogers and Einstein a bit, you <laughs> fucking asshole." And it's like that all for all of us, you know. How much time do you feel like you put into being a dentist? Like, uh, I, I mean, as far as like the 40 hour work weekend and, and 
work weekend. Work I was gonna week. say, damn, this man works hard. <laughs> work Forty hour work weekend. <laughs> when do you schluff? When do you get uh, your sleep, dog? I mean, there's that, and and then there's just like. As far as, as, like, if there's something that I'm not sure about, like, say I have, like, a case where it's, like, I'll see something like, oh, I'm not really sure what my diagnosis would be on that. You know, I, I try and do, like, my due diligence in terms of, like, follow-ups, uh, doing my own, like, you know, internal consults between my friends and whatnot. Is there, like, a website where you, like, upload stuff be like, guys, what do you guys think about this? Because I don't know what to look – like, or do you have a mentor you go to? Uh, what do I do with this guy's tooth? <laughs> you, you know, I do have, like, a, a mentor I go to at work. Uh, other um, – uh, people I, I've worked for in private practice who yeah. I have like good relationships with, uh, and you know I, I trust is their treatment philosophy. Yeah. Um, uh, and then if uh, I need more, you know, dental school friends, or it's just like, hey, uh, I'll I'll text them. I was like, I got this case. What do you think? Um, and then it's just a good way to kind of like catch up with like old friends and whatnot. What's the hardest? What's the hardest case you've had with that you've had to figure out that you've solved and been like, oh, thank God, but we were right. We were right. We fixed. We fixed that lady's jaw. I'm making a listener. Uh, I, but. I didn't even solve it. What did you do? There was a lesion in, in this patient's mouth, mm-hmm. and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what it was. Uh, I tried placing him on, you know, a uh, different type of uh, antibiotics, uh, antifungals, um, and. Uh, usually when it's a lesion in the mouth uh, and uh, you potentially concerned about it, you, you're pre- concerned about the risk of it being cancerous. Um, and um, I, after, like, multiple attempts at, like, you, you know, like, hey, let's just watch it for a little bit. Oh, okay, no change. Oh, you know, let's try prescribing this. Oh, no change. Um, and I was like, I-, I want you to see a specialist because I, I don't know what it is. Uh, and the guy was like, I-, I don't want to see a specialist. Uh, uh, and rightly so. I mean, like, I- I'm very hesitant to just keep referring to people to specialists because specialists, you know, there's an extra charge involved. And a lot of times, you know, you know I, w- I work with, like, low-income people. It's like, well, yeah, you, you want to take, like, the-, the patient's finances into account. But what ended up happening? <laughs> he he went back to like his home country, um, and he was just like, "Yeah, I just talked to my dentist there, and he told me to rub these herbs on it, and it went away." And I was like, "What? That was it? <laughs> yeah." Was Did like, he tell you what the herbs were? Um, I written that shit down. And bought some of them. <laughs> he said he couldn't remember. Oh, and, what? And then he's just like, yeah, he had nuggets. Was, of, he had nuggets <laughs> of herb just up, up in his mouth. He's like, yeah, little well, spear well, he, greens. He was supposed to like grind it into a paste. Yeah, and, and then yeah, just apply it. And I was like. And, for the and it life. worked. Yeah. And I was watching this thing for like a good two months. Or not like watching, like treating of, of, of like, okay, like. With with synthetic things and it just didn't do it. But yeah. someone came in and threw a bag of weed on him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It, it might have. Chew on this train wreck, dog. Yeah. He's better. Yeah. And, it, you know, it was just like a very, it was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, sometimes you just things I guess you can't explain with like. Western medicine. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, dude. I mean, it, you ever hear like these people like they'll be like they, they don't want us to have the cancer cure, and you're like, shut the <laughs> fuck up. But then you're like, does somebody not want us to have the cancer cure? Like, I, I, I mean, like, could it really be a concerted effort, or is it just like in general they're just kind of like they're not going to point the the ship in that direction because they're like, well, it could be that, but we don't own proprietary rights. To that. So let's look over here. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't even know. I mean, this is turning into a, a conspiracy, I, I, uh, I a mean, conspiracy episode. N- not to like, I, I guess, I, I, I don't. I don't, I guess, label myself as a conspiracy theorist, but... Here comes the bomb. <laughs> He's going to drop it. But I am. No, no, okay, so I, I sometimes I wonder, like, if there was really was, like, a magic bullet to cure cavities, yeah. right? Um, that, that would basically ruin the dental industry. Would it, though? I'd buy it from a dentist. I get you would buy it, but... Unless it was just something I already had. He's like, you can actually just take some coffee and put it in your mouth more. <laughs> I'd be like, oh. But, but I feel like... Coffee so grounds. I think, like probably one of the biggest things you can do to prevent cavities uh and as far as just like overall just being more focused on like preventative measures yeah um which would be like things like fluoride application stuff and, and catching things is early. fluoride safe though speaking of conspiracy people think they've been putting it in the water to mess with us um I, fluoride is one of the things i probably promote the most uh, as a yeah. dentist in, in terms of so you work for the government <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, one of the well, i put in my mouth is flow rider am i right ladies <laughs> he is studly and successful 
<laughs> with with the amount of money uh, I, I owe the government, uh, <laughs> you might I, work for them. I don't know. I work for them, but they definitely own me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we're all the mass conspiracy. We're all part of. <laughs> yeah, it's called taxes, dog. They got us all. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I I would say like yeah, if you would just focus on maybe not even just like dentistry, just healthcare in general. Like if you just focus on like the preventative, like. That's not where any of the money is in, is in, in the, any of those industries, right? It, b- it bumps me out. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, Chris Rock used to have that, that, that bit. It's like, the money isn't in the cure. The money's in the treatment or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, you go like, uh, yeah, but, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's so complicated. It's hard for me to ever get to the heart of the matter. But it, it definitely I, – it's definitely – I wouldn't put it past, you know, anybody that, that there wouldn't be some sort of weird game where someone wouldn't want you to get somewhere. But I feel like with how much – discourse there is and how many intelligent people that do have empathy in in power positions it seems like it seems like more of just like a bureaucratic mess to get things in the right direction because some people would have the intentions that they wouldn't want things to be get this way or that way or they wouldn't want things to change just like we have with environmental stuff with oils and whatnot as, a, as opposed to just like a, an actual like a concerted effort by a large group of people you know what i mean yes but but well, what I feel I, the butt uh, about I, to come out of your lips. What, like, I, what I would butt. say is, is that it it's probably more just kind of like a power struggle between old thought and new thought, right? Yeah. Because if you're an older – if you come from an older way of thinking, it was just like – like a surgeon is always going to think – well, for lack of a better way, I don't want to stereotype anyone. But uh, a surgeon's always going to think like the way you, you uh, solve a case is surgically, right? So uh, it, it, I think it – it comes down to whoever's holding that seat yeah. of power. Oh yeah. So um, whatever they they are as the yeah. tool is the. So you, you'd have to kind of like change the guard. Interesting. In, in order to and and I think everyone has kind of like I don't think there's like a magic bullet to cure anything. And, and to say that you could you know cure everything preventively would be wrong. You you definitely need uh, you know surgical methods uh, um, and you know, other treatment options, um, but. It, it does seem to me that like a bulk of where you're going to make the money at is do, doing the higher cost treatments. Oh, there and, you go. And that that wouldn't be preventative. But then if I was a dentist, I'd be like, we're going to have to replace your jaw. It's $8 million. <laughs> Titanium's the only thing that's going to work. I'll just do one of those and be like, retired. Yeah. Threw my money in a multifamily syndication, <laughs> getting some interest. Done. I did one titanium jaw. Super stoked. Elon Musk can talk better than he ever talked before. I'm rolling in a dog. Unlimited Teslas. Uh, if you could – okay. So if you could – uh, uh, lightning round <laughs> as a dentist lightning round it's only one question actually sure. you got 30 seconds right uh-huh. and you're just like uh, like everyone listening has 30 seconds in the morning 30 seconds before they go to bed they can choose do you want to you can brush or floss you can't do both brush brush yeah. you go brush okay uh, I will say yeah okay. Br- brush okay if you had to my wife and one. I debate about this because I love flossing uh-huh. I bought. I have a flossing toothbrush. Ever since I bought one, like five or ten years ago, like I have no problem flossing. Yeah. In fact, just a shout out to anybody listening. As long as you verify after I say this, as long as one out of one dentists that are sitting in front of me approve, uh-huh. I buy those toothbrush flossers. And you'll ne- if you hated flossing before, you'll never have a problem again. It's easy to just grab it and just floss. But my wife hates doing that, and I'm always like, dude, it's more important to do this than to brush. But I do both, obviously. Yeah. Um- I guess as far as the one out of one dentist, are you asking my recommendation on the toothbrush flosser? Or You're the like, one out of one dentist, Doug. Uh, uh, out of this room, it's, there's only <laughs> one dentist in here. But uh, yeah, I would recommend using any type of floss. Um, but just make – then this is going to be like the weird dental thing to say. No. Just got to make sure you got to floss correctly. Yeah. Uh, and, and like a lot of people will think that like just like hearing that snap is like flossing correctly. But you definitely want to like hug like each surface. Of side to side. Yeah. And pretend like you're shining it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like people will say like I floss all the time and yet there's like a lot of plaque and I'm like I don't want to say you're not because I don't want to call you a liar. But maybe we're just not doing it correctly. And, and, and that's what you that's I imagine what an animated scenario where you have someone laying in your chair wearing a bunch of shiny jewelry and like dog I'm always flossing like no your teeth you're like huh I can't afford a grill and you're like no like flossing your teeth you're like huh uh, just, little John. just an uneducated little John guy with bad okay. plaque yeah like, okay like, we're gonna have to do some root canals here like okay yeah. um, okay what? as long as he was excited about it like that I'd be like let's do it dude <laughs> Right? Cause to have someone that excited in the dental chair, I'd be like, 
all right, you know, this, this is going to work out all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, and, and this is little John. You're like, I know he's good for it. Yeah. Whatever it costs to get this thing fixed, he's good for it. Uh, what's your favorite thing about uh, being born? About being born? Yeah. Like, you uh-huh. know, it's like if there's one thing, like, I'm just glad I was born because of – it could be anything. It doesn't have to be, like, anything grand. Oh, man. It could be cheeseburgers. It could be anything you want. It's going to be so cheesy. It, it's my kid, man. That's all right. Uh-huh. Nobody said it's going to be cheesy because it's yeah. your kid. Ah, we're all going to pick that if you have yeah. kids. Unless you're a shit parent. <laughs> if your shit parents are listening right now, yeah. like, it's not my kid. It's my 57 <laughs> Chevy, dog. No, I, I – so my little girl, like, just turned 18. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm definitely, like, having a hard time, like, like – I, I want to say a lack of a better term, like letting go. Not letting go, but oh, like... yeah, dude. I can't even imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so... Um, I'm still wondering when I have to stop nibbling on my son's earlobes. Like, <laughs> when's it going to get weird when I'm nibbling on his earlobes and like tickling him and blowing raspberries on his belly? Because yeah. I don't know if I'm going to stop. He's going to have a beard and be like, right. get off me, dude. And I'm going to be like, nah, let me blow raspberries. Yeah. Uh, I still have this thing where I'm like, I'm always like p- just pinching my little girl's face. And she's like, dad, you know, I hate that. And I'm just like, I don't care. You're mine. Yeah. You lived in my balls, girl. Let me pinch those cheeks. <laughs> right? I, was, I, was, I, I call her like my Build-A-Bear. I was like, you're my Build-A-Bear. I need you. <laughs> oh, dude. So, oh, that's uh, beautiful. yeah, that, that is at the, the one thing where it's just like any kind of like hardship I go through in life. I'm like, man, I just got to do it for her. Yeah. That's oh, that's a that's a great answer. Not that it would have been a wrong answer if you're like Krispy Kreme, but like, dude, like, yeah, it's a very nice, sentimental, beautiful uh, truth right there. Chevsky here. Hey, you guys know I'm not just a fantasy real estate agent. I'm a really real real estate agent. That's right. In real life in Southern California, I am a realtor. So hit me up if you want to talk about houses, condos, multifamily apartment buildings. If you want to sell a house, buy a house, fantasy house podcast at Gmail. Dot com or on Instagram at J O N S H E F S K Y. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Real estate, it's really fun. All right, guys, back to the show. What's the uh, geographic uh, location of your fantasy house? If we're flying a drone over it, what are we looking at? Where is it at? Um, so presently, it, it would be in like downtown LA. And, and, yeah, and, and DTLA. There's a lot of like uh, features to the house, which is why I had to mention presently. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know if you want me to start off with with that feature or dude, like, dude, dude you're, you're pumped. Go. go. <laughs> tell, tell me what are we seeing if we're flying a drone uh, over it or okay. A so, uh, like, my fantasy house would um, would be on top uh, of like some type of high rise or oh, rad. Um, yeah, and, and it would be like multiple levels. Um, if you kind of imagine it, I guess like a cruise ship, right? You yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so. Uh, I guess to why I would say presently is because um, it, it would be able to detach. Like, say I was like, right, you know what? I just want to go to New York. Yeah. My fantasy house would, like, detach, f- fly over another high rise in New York, and then attach there. Badass. <laughs> and, oh, and, I love and, yeah. it. Uh, but it would it, be oh, so cool. mostly made for, like, uh, downtown, like, metropolitan area yeah oh rad yeah and so what's it look like does it look like just like does it just look like another like a lego layer to the building like on top or does it have a special a unique look to it or a color or um I, theme I, or design i tone? would say like the look would it would, would probably so the base w- would be uh, uh i want to make sure i get this word right um <laughs> integratable Okay. So, so like, if it were to detach from wherever it's housed in like downtown LA, uh, and let's just use like Chicago yeah. for something, right? Like, if it didn't fit, if that base didn't perfectly fit the base or the the outline of the structure it was attaching to, then it, it would just have like some integrated funnel that yeah. would that would let it like it's mesh. Can, it can lock onto whatever it needs to yeah, to yeah, yeah. get the job done. <clears throat> yeah. Badass. Um, and then as far as that, it would have. Uh, three layers, okay. or I guess three stories. Okay. So uh, the bottom. Um, that's where we're com- that's where we're coming into right now. Like, so if I'm there with the Fantasy House film crew, uh-huh. we show up. Do we ride up the the, bu- the regular building and then get in from there, or is there some sort of thing that goes all the way to the ground, or um, a helicopter to a pad, or there there? So between the levels, there there is like uh, various elevators and staircases, but to get. Um, to get there, um, you just take like a teleportation kind of. Yeah, Beam I, me I, up. I don't want to say teleportation. Um, it's just like a, a magic 
gateway. Okay. Because so from the ground in downtown LA, like from yeah. Second Street, so we're at Tokyo. I'm gonna get some sushi with the crew, and then we just get into like a portal elevator. Yeah, uh, or like a portal elevator, or like uh, wherever my parking spot would be. So if like I'm driving to my parking spot, yeah, um, yeah you would just park in the spot, and then yeah. you would magically teleport. And I, I say magically because if that technology actually existed yeah. then someone would definitely like use it for like some kind of like wrongdoing and and then i would feel awful that the technology exists so you need it to be magic so, so i need it to be safe. magic it's <laughs> only a second. if you're listening and you're developing this kind of thing be under be aware this yeah. is only for good uh, um all right so we just beamed up yeah so so the pardon my french for saying beamed up we just <laughs> portaled there uh and and that would take you to um I guess the first level, which would be uh, your garage and uh, four guest rooms. All right. Describe it. What's in that garage? Um, I'm not a big car guy. Uh, the Are one you a little car guy? A little. Just had to go there. Look, we're a couple of dads. Don't get mad. A couple of dads. One of us has some dad jokes. NBD, bro. Just a bunch of little cars You're everywhere like for you to step on. They're and quarter like, scale. Oh. I can't sit in them, but I like to admire them from a distance. Play with them. All right. What, what do you have in the garage? Um, it, the the one thing would be, um, it would be like a mobile dental van. Um, so I guess it would be like part. RV, yeah, and then just with like a dental space where I could just like travel across the country and like I guess travel across the world, yeah, because I wouldn't want to be li- limited to like a continent or have to worry about like crossing oceans or whatnot. Um, but just just help help people who need it. Um, and then the other cars would be, I don't know. I, I guess I like my Prius, so there you there'd go. still be a Prius in there. That's yeah. great. You got a <laughs> the, Prius. The LA car. <laughs> That's, yeah. Downtown LA guy's got a Prius, huh? Go figure, right? Any stickers on the bumper? Bitch. <laughs> oh, dude, that's great, though. I love it. And you have a, you have a, a mobile dental vehicle to go do some good in this world. Very yeah, cool. That. Um, and then, so in total, uh, my fantasy house would have uh, nine guest rooms, but four of them would be in the bottom uh just because i have like a giant filipino family so you always need space for guests yeah. and and these would be like not my immediate family yeah <laughs> so you have different tiers of family. yeah There's i do a cast system I, I in do. my house i do yeah. oh, that's great everyone has different passes for different layers you're like oh how close are we well just look at your name tag when you scan it it'll show a color if your badge doesn't scan, yeah. there's a reason. <laughs> you have access to the restroom. Um, and then uh, on this bottom floor, the only other thing would be, um, would be, uh, for lack of a better term, an, uh, an art room. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm very much into collecting, like, poster prints. I can't afford originals, so they're all poster prints. Yeah, the original, right? <laughs> <laughs> original, original, dude. Just get poster prints. Even in your fantasy house, you're like, let's keep it on budget. Yeah. Let's get some posters.com going here. Um, what would you have? What would these prints be? Uh, just, I guess, like large collection uh, of, I guess, my favorite artists or just art I, I would stumble upon. Do you have anybody in particular in your head like it, or any kind of art in your head? That you- I mean, as far as like the the ones I've been collecting a lot, or like the artists I collect a lot, uh, you know, Shepard Fairey, who's probably like oh, the yeah. first person I ever is just like, oh my god, this art is amazing. Yeah, and then I uh, ran into him once. Oh, yeah? I lived in Los Feliz, and I was I used to I just walked for hours and hours, and I, and I was walking up into the hills of Los Feliz once, uh-huh. and there was a bunch of guys doing really cool like graffiti art on these tables in a garage in a mansion up there, uh-huh. and it was him and a bunch of his friends like making prints oh, in, nice. in the garage. What was he cool? I didn't get to like I didn't oh. really stop and hang out but he was really friendly when I was like what's up he's like hey what's going on and yeah. I was just like I walked away and I was like and this is before he was like big big and famous but yeah. I like knew I was like that's the Obey dude yeah. holy shit I knew him I knew him by name I knew it was Shepard Ferry and I was just like whoa yeah. but anyways go on yeah um, he was really nice for that split second that I said what's up <laughs> <laughs> great guy uh, Cleon Peterson okay I love his stuff uh, there's this dude uh, out of um, Maryland his name's Naturel yeah. He does kind of like a lot of like hip hop, um, street inspired, but it's also like Picasso influenced. Yeah. Um, but it's like modern, so it's got the best of yeah. old school stuff mixed in with like the newer. I, I, I just I just recently discovered like Jay Howell. 
I can't he, remember Jay Howell. Offhand. He, he does. Name, but. He does. He's the animator for Bob's Burgers, or I don't oh, know if he's yeah. the animator, but he's he, the, the cartoonist. And like the, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, but his like other stuff. I is, love that style, and I, like his humor in his art is like great. Um, Dude, I gotta look. I gotta look it up now because yeah. I, lo- I love Bob's Burgers, yeah. the, the show, but also the graphics are <laughs> sick. Yeah, um, the hairs on on Bob's arm, and, like, <laughs> just like the dry looks on people's faces. And, oh yeah, yeah. Dude, it's so good. Uh, I, my wife's got to check him out too. She she loves Bob's Burgers, and she's painted a picture of um, Tina. Of everyone Tina. loves Tina. Yeah, yeah everyone loves Tina. <laughs> Dude. That'd be a great show based off of everyone's love. Everyone it's like a sitcom style. Everyone loves Raymond, but it's everybody, everybody loves Tina. I, thought, I like how you thought of uh, everyone lo- loves Raymond, and I, for whatever reason, thought of everyone hates Chris. Everyone hates Chris, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yours made more sense. <laughs> no, they, they both work. Everybody, everybody picks one. That's my yeah. show. Uh, uh, but yeah, it would just kind of like just be um, – just kind of like my massive art collection like a uh, gallery with like no, just like a couple like benches to just admire and chill or? so no this would just be the storaging room oh, okay. like it would all be like custom framed already and um if you imagine kind of like a dry cleaner like mm-hmm. oh rack, wow so you could just like catalog it and then because my fantasy house is high tech um you, you can just like tell the house where you want it to install on what wall oh fun that's rad oh i like that a lot dude yeah um it's like a 3d version of just going through jpegs on your computer and just looking at like stuff you've collected over the years which i love to do and just be like whoa cool yeah and and you can swap out like um like the borders on your like custom framing or whatnot if you if you want like a different aesthetic outside of that um but yeah that i don't know why i put it in the bottom level but it would probably be one of my favorite rooms. Just That's great, just to be able to look at all of that and like find inspiration from. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, all right, where, where are we going next? Um, I guess we can go to really the cool. second floor. Second floor. And 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 this would be like my entertainment floor. Yeah. Uh, so you would just have like multiple um, entertaining rooms. Like uh, if you were to take the elevator up from the first floor. Yeah. It would lead you uh, to that second floor and open up to like the living room. Yeah, and, and from there, uh, I would just want that to be like a large, spacious place where everyone can just kind of hang out. Uh, but the things that would be in my fantasy house there, um, one, there would be like a, a bookcase specifically, I guess for books. <laughs> I don't know why I had to say it's just a bookcase. Um, Let me get this straight. You're going to have a bookcase. And it's for books. Yeah. Okay. Novel idea. Right? <laughs> I'm loving what you're doing with right, creativity. Right. It's flowing. Because every now, it's all just on Kindles now, right? Yeah. That, like, that's true. Someone might ask, what is this? Dude, that's, that's true, huh? In 20 years of fantasy house, people might be like, what's all these papers stuck together? It's so so much space yeah. wasted here. Yeah. But... but um, I guess the three important things in this room would be uh, a, a bookcase, bookcase, uh, um, somewhere that uh, another type of case uh, that would house like my music collection. Um, what were they I on guess, CDs? Or? They would be on CDs because that's uh, now the classic. Like the dad yeah. with the record collection is now yeah. the dad with the CDs. I, I go to Amiibo a lot and buy just a lot of used CDs. Oh yeah. Um, It'll be used as, as as currency after the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you two lag wagons and a Neil Diamond for just a glass of coconut water, please. I feel like you would try and barter like you'd ha- you you would start off with just the Neil Diamond, right? And just be like, all right, I'll throw on the lag wagon. <laughs> but and but you like, know Neil works for like, who's lag wagon? You're like, what? <laughs> give me that Neil Diamond. I'll go get coconut water somewhere else. But you know Neil is worth it, yeah. right? I feel like you're underselling, or I guess maybe underselling lag. Uh, who I don't. No. You can have my, you can have my Green Day, but you can't have my Bob Seger. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, um, yeah, uh, and and so there would be those two things prominently on display, um, and um, this coffee table that uh, Jeremy Fish uh, designed. Um, it's just in the shape of a turtle. I saw it when I was like 19. And you um, couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. It, it. It, 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 it's it's not anything made up. It's just this piece of art furniture that I don't know if I'll ever have, but it's in my fantasy I'm house. the same way. Too. <laughs> that's so cool. Okay, that's badass. Yeah. Can we look up? Can people who are listening look at, look up this, this table? 
Uh, is it like yeah, a famous, it, like iconic, like I think Robin table? Williams actually bought it. Um, but yeah, it's just Jeremy Fish turtle table. Robin it's Williams. a turtle coffee table. Oh, okay, look yeah. that up if you're listening. And you're like, what does um, he talk about? Dude, yeah, I, I want to look it up afterwards too. Um, but the reason I would have those set up there is. Uh, so people could look through it and I would hope that it would be like a conversation starter as to like, you know, it's like, Oh, like you like this author or you like this band or, or whatnot. Um, because I, I feel like that tells me a lot about people and, and I would want people to also give me their input of like, Oh, almost like <laughs> the physical version of like an Amazon, <laughs> like recommended list. It was just like, Oh, you like this. I like, I mean, I love that. Yeah. I feel like so much of my life has been like, blessed with like cool <coughs> foods and music and movies and experiences just from people being like oh if you like this you've got to try this yeah like dude so that's so that's one of the ways that you connect with with your guests is, is yeah recommending so, cool stuff to each other yeah and and then i guess like I, I would have like specifically picked art pieces on the wall of like things i would want people's opinion on or just stuff i thought was cool i guess or how i was feeling at this certain time um but that like would, i'd walk in some days and be like Whoa, this guy's horny. And then other days I'd be like, man, he is fucking depressed. Like, just depending on what's on the wall, like, yeah, basically. Black and white Holocaust pictures. You want to go out for a drink, buddy? And then some days be like, Titty Thursdays. Man, true. What a. I like it when I come over on Titty Thursdays. Holocaust Mondays, not so much. But Titty Thursdays, loving your house. Right. Great turtle, by the way. Uh, yeah. uh, all right. Where else? Are, where else can we go? What's, uh, uh, what's next? Is there anything else on that level? Or, is it, or oh, next? this is just like uh, this level is purely just for like entertainment. So uh, you got your dining room, kitchen. Um, Take us to that kitchen and dining room. What, is the dining room anything special there we need to see? Or no, no, not really. I mean, other than it's like big and can house. Uh, so like again, I'm Filipino, so I'm just used to having like big family parties where like everyone just gets food to chill everywhere together. and like oh, yeah. everyone gets to together. That sounds and then um, I, I lechon. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, dude. Yeah. Yeah, is, it, is it Mang Thomas sauce? Yo, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, Philip, dude. It's, it's was, Mang Tomas. I, Mang Tomas. But yeah, I wrote Mang Tomaszewski <laughs> on the bottle at my house. We, my brother gets lechon every now and then. For oh. his, he has his like work friends over. Yeah, and they'll get lechon and, and and they get that sauce. And I'm just like, dude, I covet that sauce. <gasps> I fry up like oh, I'll like make rice and I'll fry up the rice in it. It's like oh, yeah. the best sauce. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm stoked. Oh, yeah. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Yeah. All right, so I've been saying uh, Mang Tomas. It's, uh, it, it's, it's Mang Tomas. Mang Tomas. I, I, at least I think. I don't know. Like I gotta uh, say it like a, a Jewish guy trying to say yeah. it. Right? It's Mang Thomas. We're like it's Mang Tomas. But I, I guess I'm always very hesitant to like correct people because I don't know. Like, ooh, all right. So one time, um, my aunt, she, uh, we were talking about something, and oh, I was I was complaining that. These people were just so ignorant because uh, they they keep asking me if I speak Filipino, and I was like, "It's Tagalog, it's Tagalog. Like, why like why can't you just learn that about my culture?" And this was like when I was like eighteen or nineteen, and she was like, "Actually, the national language is Filipino." And I was like, "So I've been the asshole yeah. this whole time." That's always a slap in the face when you're pretentious about something. Yeah. Like, hey, guess what? You fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. So you might be pronouncing it right. I'm just like, no, I'm not. I guarantee I'm pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah, you never know the uh, the invent the I guess inventor the creator could just be like, no, it's Mang Thomas. <laughs> Everyone else just been like giving it that accent, which I never yeah. wanted. <laughs> the, whoever made it's like it's actually Mang Thomas in the original Filipino language where it was pronounced Mang. You're like it's what you mean. <laughs> Uh, is, it, is there anything else on this level we should see? Is it is a kitchen? Uh, oh, the kitchen! Uh, it's going to have this like magical dumb waiter. Oh, cool! A- and um, it, it, it. everyone knows if you're listening, you know what a dumb waiter is. It's when you have the um, uh, it's like an elevator for your stuff that goes yeah. to the it goes to the commissary, right? It goes to the. I guess in this scenario, it would just go to the kitchen. Okay, so it, its purpose would be if I wanted anything food wise in the world, I, I would just. Get it from this magical dumbwaiter. Like whatever you want is going to come out of that. Yeah. Like oh. if I wanted like beignets from like New Orleans or, or something like that. Or if I wanted like a, a, a New York slice of pizza. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh. And, but the caveat is um, 
it, it would only work like three times a week because otherwise you would just get lazy. <laughs> you're, you're so smart. You're so smart. What you did is you put a limitation on it, yeah. which is so necessary because there is so much more freedom in that discipline of having a limitation. They'd be like, anytime you want, you can have whatever you want. Like, oh, like those rats that they tested on the orgasm machine that all died. Like, Wait, what? There's like rats that they did. Like they did a, like a psychology or a science psychology. I'm such a friggin' knuckle dragger. I'm just like putting d- words on things. Some scientists, somebody with a degree that went to collage went and took took mice or some sort of intelligent um, uh, mammals and hooked like electrodes to their brain or something like that to measure them and it gave them – they put like a, a button. I'm totally butchering this. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a situation. But if you're listening to this, you probably could look it up and know. They basically made it so that these – uh, little rats or mice could press a button to have an orgasm and I think that like a bunch of them like the you'd have an orgasm but eventually like it would kill you or something like that and like they all just like kept going until their brains were just fried I think I think that's what happened but even if that didn't happen it would happen yeah. because if you have too much of a good thing to a certain point think of, think of your richest friends that are addicted to pills right if you're yeah. listening and you're super rich and you're just like I'm miserable because I'm so rich and I have to make problems I have to have a good time because I'm stressed about not having any problems yeah. Like if if it's too good if you if seven days a week you just have everything you want, it, like it's too good. Like humans were not we didn't evolve to have it that easy. We have to like lift weights to be strong. If you're you know what I mean, like yeah. you gotta you gotta suffer to have the benefits. Yeah. So like you're giving yourself the limit of the dumb waiter. I took a really long time for me to just say, <laughs> good brain on that guy right there. Oh, it's well, That's it's perfect. because. I know myself, if, and if I didn't put any limits, I'm just like, why would I ever do anything? I'm just going to sit by this dumb waiter and like, what do I want to eat today? <laughs> just, get, just get fatter and fatter. Yeah, like, yeah. There's I, a dialysis yeah. machine right next to my dumb waiter because I'll be on it for my entire – yeah. That's why my fantasy house is just me tied up fasting. It's a forced fast. I'm not allowed to eat for six days, then I have one meal, then I'm back on fast. I've got to survive. Um, got to be healthy. Okay. Um, so you have a badass dumb waiter. Yeah. Can I just ask this? Sure. What would we have right now if I was here with the, f- the crew filming your episode and we're like – it's me oh. and the film crew. We're like, Fantasy House, we're in your kitchen, Drew. What man. are you going to get that dumb waiter for us? Oh, man. And I'm open to anything, dude. Like blow my mind however you want. But what, what are you going to have come out of that thing? All right. Like I, I can't think of just like one thing right now because I feel no, like okay. I – It could I be would... a feast. Yeah, in yeah, fact, yeah, I yeah. demand it. OK. List uh, off what we're right. having. All right. So I guess it's also kind of hard right now because like I've, I've been trying to like – be a lot healthier lately. So like this ain't this ain't this ain't the time to hold back. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. At the magical. But dumbwaiter. there are some really like good healthy options. All, all right. right, so uh, um, I'll eat your shitty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's some good. Healthy all options. right, all right. So I guess if if I was, I'm trying to fight back by my um, whatever uh, whatever I have inside me right now. That's just like oh no, like be healthy. Like don't try try not to break even in this fantasy. Well, world. don't let this episode <laughs> screw you up on your diet. Like after you you call me back three days later, you're like you know we talked about the dumb waiter thing and. I gained 12 pounds. My doctor's got me on all these <laughs> cholesterol drugs. Uh, it, make it healthy then. Uh, but, but what, no, no, just no. Just get healthy no. food. No, no, no. no. Now, now you've got me on this, and I was like, I can't skimp. Like, this is this – is, if we're going all out, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is like, French macarons. Oh, yeah. I love those things. Oh, like, yeah. I, I, like, pistachio oh, would be the one I pick. Pistachio is one of my favorites. Um, but, yeah, Do, I, if you – just straight from like the, the magic dumb waiter would just like take it straight from France and you're just oh. like <clears throat> so you know that Jews eat something called a macaroon on Passover and it's a little uh-huh. coconut uh, treat because you're not allowed to have leavened bread on Passover uh-huh. it's part of the holiday because our ancestors had to escape from Egyptian slavery and they uh like Moses made this deal, which is like you think if you had God on your side, like you would be able to negotiate, like give him two days and leavened bread. Instead, yeah. he was just like, yeah, I'm not going to use that card. And then the Jews had to get out of Egypt because Moses negotiated for them, like let my people go. Yeah. But we got to go right now before the Pharaoh changes his mind. So the people are like, but our bread is not leavened yet. What are we going to do? And Moses is like, just we got to get the fuck out. So <laughs> they got out of there. They're like, all right, we'll eat these like crackers. And then they got lost in the desert for a long time. So all they had were these dry crackers to eat called matzah and so nowadays to torture ourselves and be in touch with our ancestors for passover every year we're not supposed to i obviously don't follow this rule because i'm a horrible jew but good jews don't eat uh they don't eat like leavened bread so all the little treats are all like special treats and special foods that aren't leavened because a bunch of people religious jews think that they're like getting a leg up on god like i found a loophole it's like yeah i don't think they had these macaroons but anyways i always thought macaroons was that right but then you have macarons or macarons or whatever they are, so I, and I was blown away. 
I honestly don't know like if I'm saying it right because like for the longest time I would say macaroons and to me I'd always think of those French things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's what I thought too. Yeah. But so whenever I first had them, I was like, wait a second, this is a macaroon. And I had them at Bouchon in uh, in in L.A., which was yeah. a Thomas Keller French restaurant. That was amazing. And I was like, I was like, this is just like heavenly. Yeah. Have you ever been to Milk on Beverly or Milk in Silver Lake? It's a little dessert place. It, did they have one in New York? Like they might. The, the lady who owns it is a Lebanese lady that uh-huh. lives mostly, I think, in Lebanon, and then comes out here like to manage the business. From what I've been told by the employees, huh. uh, but it, <clears throat> dude, it's like it is bomb. They make ice cream sandwiches, and the sandwiches on the outside are ma- macaroon. Oh. So it's a, so it's a macaroon on each side, and then a beautiful hockey puck of an ice cream sandwich. Oh, Seven God. fucking dollars too. You're just like it's a small ice cream sandwich. Seven dollars. <laughs> what are you doing with this? What are you buying out in Lebanon? Like how many acres you got? But like, dude, it's it's bomb. It is amazing. And so, if you're a yeah. macaron, dude, oh, it's on my list now. Milk. We, we gotta go. We gotta go there, dude. They have Thai iced tea. They have green tea. They have a bunch of other ice cream flavors. But every now and then, they have freaking Earl Grey tea ice cream in the middle uh-huh. with like lavender macaroons on the outside, which is just like I'm just like cream in my jeans. Even thinking about it, like just fat boy heaven. Ah. Oh. Oh, dude, just little gay John. Like, can you please have a lavender macaroon, mommy? Please. Oh, dude. Okay. Oh, we got to move on. I, right. I, I, I can't I can't ruin my diet either, dude. And like, I'm just like, you know, we could probably – I can call my wife. We can go to L.A. tonight. That's good. <laughs> we had to do it. We, we, we've got to. We had to test the magic Bang. dumbwaiter theory. I, I, rent a, I rent a convertible for us. <laughs> Ow! We got like – we buy, buy like $100 worth of macaroons, just drive around and get sick on them. Oh, that's my idea of partying, dude. I'm just – So that about. would give us seven, uh, tw- yeah, we 12 that macaroons. Many. Not even that many. I, I get sick on them. I think very yeah. rich. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you were like, no, I paid for this. I'm going to eat it's them a all. a lot of sugar. I mean, oh, I will eat. I will not. I'm like a goldfish. Yeah. Eat me ice cream. I do not stop it. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we're having macaroons. Yeah. Pistachio, one of pistachio. my favorite ice cream flavors. Definitely grub down on macaroons with your uh, pistachio style. Thank you for that. It's good imaginary eating. This could be a new diet thing is that you get people to imaginary eat and they're like, I'm full. I'm, I'm good. Now I'll eat my kale. I wish it would work that, that way. It doesn't work that way. No. It's just like, no, I don't know why I'm doing this. It's like fantasizing <laughs> sexually. You're like, well, now I now I need to actually – no, I need, I need the real thing. Now. Yeah. It's just going to be like talking a, about it. a weird worm ho- ho- loophole in your brain yeah. until it's satisfied. Oh, dude. It is a fun experience though, like imaginary eating like a, a macaroon right now. Just thinking yeah. about you serving them up. Like a cool magic dumb waiter. I'm like, that was fun. Uh, all right, where else you got to show us? We got we got a few minutes left. Uh, right. we got the third floor. Uh, third floor. Um, oh wait, there, I would have to have a basketball court inside my house. Just going to big. Yeah, uh, I know you love basketball. Um, you got uh, that sweet basketball <laughs> tattoo from the olden days. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a sweet tattoo. Yeah, man. Too bad that guy doesn't tattoo anymore. Damn, burn. <laughs> I'm gonna tell that fool. Uh, and then we got to have a karaoke room. Uh, because that's how Filipino Because you're Filipino. Yeah, so <laughs> Filipino <be> cry. <laughs> <laughs> no care if one of your relatives listens to this, they'd be like, this guy didn't have a, you didn't have a karaoke room? What? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I just feel like, but they, but they would be sit, staying in the in the bottom floor, <laughs> obviously, if they criticize Can me. Can I tell you a Filipino story? Uh, so one of my best friends who's no longer with us, Raymond, <clears throat> may he rest in peace, one of the sweetest dudes ever, uh, half Mexican, half Filipino, and it, it, when we were kids at his house, or I should say kids, when we were in our like teens and 20s, at his house, uh, his Filipino side, uh, uh, they had a, a his whole family was over a big party and they had karaoke at his house and I don't even remember which relative it was if it was his great grandma or his old aunt but I sang Sweet Caroline drunkenly sang Sweet Caroline like on bended knee karaoke style to his old like great grandma and aunt dude oh, nice karaoke and, style and everyone loved it yeah. oh they loved it killed this is yeah. before I was a comedian and everything and it just yeah. it, it, it it killed and yeah. Raymond loved it and it was like one of the best uh, yeah. best experiences uh, uh, karaoke it brings people together what would we sing uh, in your fantasy house right now for karaoke oh man what, what would you sing to be like alright check this out guys what would I, I sing it's your episode of Cribs you know what I mean you gotta show us something for some reason, I'm just gonna go with the first song uh, that popped in my head, and uh, it's Stone Temple Pilots' "Plush." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was like, because all right, so my sketch team, uh, we used to be on every Sunday, uh, and every, every fourth Sunday of the month, yeah, and um, 
after our show, we'd go to one of the local bars and, and they would do karaoke on Sunday nights. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, in my list of like songs I wanted to do in karaoke, uh, Stone Temple Pilots is on there. And I was just like, you asked me that question. I was like, oh, I still got to do that song. Yeah. And, and, and that's where that came from. <laughs> so the first line. Of, do you remember the first line of that song? What is, oh, so I always. The, what was I always, the chorus? Uh, wait in the dark to find her. Got time, time, time wait for tomorrow. The to find her. Right. So that's gonna pump, I think that's going to pump everyone. It's going to pump me up. Dude, <laughs> got to. That's great. Wow, I love it. Just imagine that we did the whole song and just looking at the film uh, the camera crew like, ah, you guys get this? This is good. Eh? Oh, yeah. dude, this crazy high-tech house, but there's a Filipino guy singing Stone Devil Pilots. <laughs> as I've got like macaroon crumbs all over my shirt. Like, this is the best fantasy album ever. Right. Oh, dude. All right. Uh, um, we got a few minutes left. We got to go to your like, show us your final like badass stuff. Okay. So the top floor, you can kind of skip. It, it would just be like the master bedroom and like uh, five rooms up there would be for like uh, my mom uh, and my stepdad, my dad, my stepmom, uh, my daughter, uh, my brother. And like I'm sure there's one other person who deserves that room. Um, but then on top of that, w- which would be like the roof yeah. of my fantasy house um, – this is important because this is a skyscraper topper yeah. house that goes anywhere in the world on a skyscraper. So this is like the top of a skyscraper. Yeah. This is priority. <clears throat> so um, it, when I used to live in New York, I, I would always think it was cool where you would look on top of these like walk-ups or, or whatnot um, and you'd see a house on top of it. Yeah. So on, on top of my fantasy house w- would be like another house and it, it would just kind of be like – your suburban a cute well, yeah <laughs> yeah your your sub- suburban five bed four uh four bath <laughs> so rad. uh and, and with like a fake grass garden and, and so if you ever wanted to just get out of the city life you just go up to the top floor so you're sitting in like a cute house <laughs> yeah. on the top of a skyscraper yeah oh dude yeah oh, that's uh, so bad and and uh yeah that that would just kind of be like i guess my getaway so cute. Describe <laughs> the house to us too. Just like give us a visual, like the tiling on the on the roof or whatever kind of roof shingles or whatnot, and the the uh, the, the colors and whatnot. Uh, I, I feel like it, it would be. You know what? I was so when I'm thinking uh, like suburban, uh, I just think of well, hometown Chino Hills. Yeah. So it represent yeah. Chino Hills. <laughs> but I guess if you're telling me now, I can put it whatever color. I, I, I feel like I, I don't know. Purple comes to mind right now, uh, and I won't have any like neighbors to piss off, so I, I, I could make it whatever color. <laughs> That's there's, right. Yeah, right? It's there's your fantasy. The- <laughs> it doesn't matter if you do have neighbors; you can do whatever color you want, yeah. dude. Um, Freedom. But I, I don't know much about roofing, so I guess normal roof. <laughs> <laughs> You're making it really easy for the contractors. Like, all right, check normal roof. We got you. So yeah, roof does. Okay. Uh, I, I guess the most important part, with, eh, and I, 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 wa- I would want like the like. All the bedrooms have carpet, but then, like, I guess, like, the the common areas, you know, like, wood flooring. Um, and then I think the most exciting part about this would probably be the backyard where, where you, if you want to throw Filipino parties, <laughs> you'd have a lot of space to barbecue and just eat and, and drink and hang out. Oh, dude. I, and I guess the living room would have a lot to do, too. And, and then you'd probably – Need just like a, a little mini karaoke setup. <laughs> Got to Gotta have. Listen, the fantasy house with two karaoke setups. Freaking amazing house, dude. I love it. Hashtag blessed guest. Thanks for having me, dude. Oh, dude. so rad. Thanks for having me, dude. So rad. Uh, where can people find you? Would you would you want them to hit you up uh, for dentistry or uh, where do you want people to find you? At? Well, comedy, comedy uh, and dentistry. I'm, I'm open if you, anyone has any dental questions. Uh, I don't mind giving my thoughts or opinions about that um i guess instagram would be the easiest yeah place just to picking find me. one one platform yeah. is the best um my tag is drew goes to 11 uh like spinal tap <laughs> he's got to 11. Drew goes to 11. <laughs> um and uh yeah uh y- you'll mostly just find me posting pics of my kid because i'm that dad <laughs> that's not good i'm that but dad too man i do have some comedy stuff up there and comedy wise uh my new sketch team uh, Rabble Rabble is on every third Wednesday of the month, and that's at the Pack Theater in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, dude. I've done stuff there at the Pack Theater. Hell, uh, yeah. Nice. Rad, dude. Yeah. Guys, go see Drew at the Pack. Hit him up on Instagram. It's just Drew Francis, right? 
Yeah, Drew Francis. D R E W F R A N C I S. Yeah. Drew Francis on Instagram. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this, dude. Oh, dude, thank you for having me, dude. This, this is dope. Dude, such an awesome <laughs> fantasy house. Guys, if this is your first time uh, listening, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, give us a five star review. If you are a regular listener that's already subscribed, why don't you do me a favor and hit that share button and send this episode to somebody that needs dental work or needs to be inspired and thinking about. Pistachio macaroons uh, and, and karaoke with Filipino people, dude. This is this is their episode. Hit the share button right now. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it, guys. Having a blast and uh, be silly and have fun. Mwah!